is written. Jesus, the Son of Man, hath not a place to lay his head. Imagine that. Speaking to the temporariness of this life as a Son of Man. He's speaking for us as sons of men, sons of Adam, not as sons of God. It's also written that he would give us over and above that which you could ask or think, super abundantly over and above that which we ask or think, according to his will. We're living in a world experience that could have been forever, would have had no beginning, no end. It would have been an expression of the kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom of heaven. But we've forgotten that kingdom and developed our kingdom here. Thus it's temporary. The Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. We may get permanent. Had the steadfast long engaged upon the things seen and have no idea of those things unseen. If we would seek first, says the King of God, all these things in this temporary life would have been met. Over and above that was you ask the things we were bunny over and above that was you ask. But if you get distracted and cut yourself off on that kingdom and its expression here on earth, what are you expressing? Kingdom men? Kingdom of Satan? Compared to the kingdom of God manifested on earth. We see that in very limited ways think we have accomplished something. But the man profit if he gained the whole world and loses his soul. How do you save your soul? Scripture writes about it, Psalm twenty three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, besides still waters, he restores my soul. It's to the saving of the soul. That's what he wants. You are a life giving spirit. You come into a body. You quicken that body. You became a living soul of intellect and emotions and a free will to either go independent from God and your own soulish, carnal ideas and opinions or surrender that. Don't get caught up in this trap. He that seeks to be wealthy falls into a trap and a snare. Scriptural. You're in a trap and a snare. There's no temptation taking you, but such is common to all men. But God's prepared a way to escape that you might endure this. Live this life. Occupied till he comes. And not be so earthly money, you know heavenly good, or so heavenly money, you know earthly good. He brings the balance. How do you get to that balance? Flee idolatry, he says. Don't worship this life. Enjoy it. Be in it, but not necessary of it. In the life I now live in this place of race, cultures, creeds, and gender, I live through the faith of the Son of God, a faith that was altered and finished before the foundations of this world, that offers a kingdom not made by hands, that has no beginning, has no end, was, it never shall be, to be expressed on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you cut yourself off from that kingdom, that reality, and make this real. I tell you what, if God had any love for you, he will wean you from this life to the saving of your soul and your body by your quickening your human spirit and understand you're eternal your eternal spirit that could have lived forever he desires that you live forever and everything he says and does is not cruel he knows what's best for us, better than you or this world may think what's good for you. The nuclear of your parents that you are shaping in, of your particular race, culture, 
Second religious creeds, gender, male, female, does everything it can to distract, cut you off from what the Father of your spirit had wanted to express to you as an individual. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, my burden is light, and you'll find rest for your soul. You don't rack your brain trying to figure everything out. You're not sufficient in of yourself, cut off from God, to figure anything out. But we do. Instead of solving our problems, we create more problems. It takes an act of God to the mercy and grace of God is unconditional love to take those stupid things we say and do to impulses of thought and emotion and work it all to a good. That's the beauty of the mercy and grace of God. He much rather would have had us lean to our spirits and live rather than to the dictates of our natural flesh, father, mother, race, cultures, and creeds, and gender. If we lean to him, the father of our spirit, we would have been an expression of the kingdom of God on earth. In some degree, could have been without limits. Over and above that which you could ask or even think. Super bunny over and above that which you could ask or think. But because of the limitations of the flesh and acting independent from God, it doesn't work out that way. They have a high and he has to cut it. And you cross over a narrow road which would have given you the input that you really needed not seeking some natural high, secular religious high, you always end up in some fall of depression, then he has to bring you up out of the valley of depression. Every time you cross that narrow road, you should stay on that narrow road. 17 videos that express this. At some point in life, you worry about bouncing off peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. He said he would lower the mountains raise the valleys. He would meet your needs. The earth under your feet would rise to meet your need. He would direct your path straight, narrow. He'd take that which had been crooked in the past and make it straight. I mean, we know all this stuff. Yet, our flesh contends. His opinion is stubborn. The heart the subconscious mind is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows the heart. Throughout Scripture, we're given warning after warning, expression of experience, expression of experience, written for an example. And we seek to judge those of the past for being bad people. Yet you look in the mirror, it's you. Putting it for an example, you, son of man. You don't have a place to lay your head. It's temporary. In the wilderness experience, God fed them manna, a natural substance, manna. And to express the temporariness of this life, he said to gather only that which you need for you and your wife and kids and nothing more. Because if you gather more than you need, by morning, that manna would turn to worms. Temporariness. Give us this day our daily bread. They would meet met their needs. They went more. They tried to gather more than they needed. Sounds familiar, right? Having food and clothing and shelter for such things, be content. Discontentment will breed judgment. Each one, by come the wars among you, you desire more than that which you need. Fight and bicker, blame game. The one for this wife of mine, the one for this husband of mine. Ain't that enough? I have to contend with my flesh. I have to contend with his flesh, and their flesh. Those intents of the heart. Why did you get married to begin with? What did you expect? 
Paul warns you. He shows you his decision and life was never get married. Why? He saw it as a distraction. But he says, if you desire to get married, get married. Got to work that out. But realize, you try to meet her needs and she's trying to meet your needs and you're doing this all independent from God and nobody meeting nobody needs. God, I mean, it's a distracting element. People say that. But I wish I never got married. wish I didn't have this wife that spends all my money and his kids keep demanding, demanding, demanding. What's your need? That you need the money? No. You say you love them. Do you love your kids? Do you love your wife? Do you love your husband and kids? Love suffers less than what it did. It doesn't draw attention to, its, to itself. It doesn't reach out the eight when wrong. It hopes all things and believes all things. It self-sacrifices for the one that it loves. Independent from God, you're not going, you'll go weary of that. Of your wife and your kids. You could have went around and bought some hot rod car and fixed that up. You could have been a free man, a free woman. Your time could have been your own. You don't need your husband. You don't need your wife. Next thing you know, you pack your bags, leaving her, and she's leaving you. And then squabble over who would, who's going to get the kids and who wants the responsibility of child support. A thousand different things come into play. God, whom the Lord has joined together, let no man put a slander. We hear about that. Did the Lord bring you two together? If he did that, he would sustain you. He would take two individuals of the flesh, race, culture, creed, and gender, and brought them together in one spirit. One spirit. That they would both surrender to, and thus they would become one flesh. Expression of the will of God to a union marriage of male and female, expressed through supporting one another, their kids, they would have a house, cars, cat, dogs, and all of the above. She put bunny over and above that which you could ask for a thing, but seek first the kingdom of God. All these other things would have been added at his timing and his will. And you would express the kingdom of God on earth in a short little way in your little family, in your life. But it only be temporary, a temporary expression, which could have been and will be sometime in the near future. Expression of the kingdom of God on earth. Powerful. The example of Jesus being the living bread would meet our need daily. It's the bread of heaven. We sing about it. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. Make me whole. It's a daily expression, experience. Come down expressed in many of my bits it's called Christ in you. The mind of Christ in you. And the Father through that mind meeting your needs, directing your path, not leaning into your own understanding, but in all your ways that not only you just your path. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Promises that he would sustain your spirit, soul, and body. Promises that he would save you, sustain you, and rescue should the need arise. And he does, if we willingly give up, surrender to something greater than what we thought. By my own hand I acquired this wealth. Is that right? Apart from him, you couldn't even live. You couldn't even move. You'd fall apart. To him all things hold together and consist. He's your sustainer. He's your creator, sustainer. And he's the one that will rescue you time and time again from your stupid mistakes. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Day do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death in this life. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He disciplines me, corrects me, saves me time and time again from our stupid mistakes acting independent from him. Yea, do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I wish you to no evil, for his rod and staff they comfort me. He prepares the table before me daily. In the presence of my enemy, he anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Over and above that would you ask for things super and abundant, over and above that would you ask for things if you would wait not go with these carnal, secular, religious, emotional impulses. Those that would act impulsively must depend upon their own strength, and your strength will fail you. Even the strength of youth will fail them. At some point in life, your strength of youth fails you, and it's God's attempt, our love for you, to wean you back to His strength is through your weakness that you find that strength. And for the longest time, you're Superman. You don't need that. You don't need him. You neglect it till there comes a time when all these things begin to fail you. Your natural strength, your natural mind. If you've not developed the inward man, as Scripture clearly said, though the outward man is decaying, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day day and at some point we can put on that life now that will sustain you even in the infirmities of your body even into your old age he would sustain you to such time he decides to bring you back to that true reality and you long for that reality you long for your true home beyond this temporal expression of that home in this world I mean I've written about this at great length in other videos and I put out these short little videos like this to see that they have value. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. Your body exercise profits somewhat. But when that body exercise fails you, and you wish to God that you had remembered your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of adversity come, you develop that now. Paul saying to young Timothy that no man despise you. He had done that. He remembered his creator in the days of his youth. So when he hears Paul the Apostle talking about these matters I'm expressing in this video, he knew it. He knew of the inward Christ in him. All the wisdom and knowledge God has hidden in Christ in Christ and you have the mind of Christ. You have that which you need locked up in you, allow the Holy Spirit to work it out by letting go of what you think you have to gain something greater, a whole new creation. If this creation was so good, why would he create a new one, the new creation, and beg you? I beg you by the aforementioned mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service. Don't lean into your understanding. Always acknowledge him. Don't lean into this world and his opinion. You, know, you follow this world and his opinion, you're on your way to dying. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed, metamorphosed to a whole new being, a whole new sense of reality and power by letting go what you think you got and embrace the new creation being offered. God bless you.